Hey everybody, my name is Alicia and welcome to my channel. This is another video in my unemployment series ever since I got laid off again just a few months ago for the third time since the pandemic and the fifth time I've been laid off in my entire life. Now, for those of y'all who might be wondering, yes, uh, I come with a lot of uh, work experience, which is why I've been laid off five times in my entire life. It honestly doesn't count the times that I've quit jobs or actually been fired. <laughs> um, and a lot of the times, I know I say it a lot, but like some of the times when I was fired without doing anything wrong, I just, I was so young, I did not know what my rights were <clears throat> in collecting unemployment or getting approved for other state benefits that I'm gonna talk about later in this video. Uh, before I get started, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, um, I wanna do a few more videos, just a couple more videos about unemployment, you know, where to find money, side hustles that I've started, even when I was employed. And I wanna talk a little bit more about what I am doing to basically just prepare myself for the future in making money online. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, please put them down in the description down below. And uh, one more little thing, there is gonna be a huge bonus tip at the end of this video. I want you to stay for the whole video. There's gonna be a bonus tip that I really wanna share with people. I didn't know and I had to learn it the hard way. So let's get started. The video might be a little lengthy today only because I have a lot of wisdom and information uh, of what comes with some of the things that I am going to talk about. Excuse my voice. I just got off the phone with my mom and had an hour long conversation unexpectedly thinking I was just going to get her address and turned out to something more. So anyways, if you guys haven't seen some of my other previous videos, I do have one that's called, you know, getting laid off for the third time since the pandemic and basically what industry that I've been working in. So the reasons why I wanted to put off this video is they just don't teach this stuff in college. And I've actually seen other videos of people, you know, talking about they got laid off. And usually it's really, really young people that don't understand that there's, you know, there's some things going on in the universe when you, I mean, really, even if you got fired, you know, um, I can tell you this, I've been fired before and I was like, thank God they fired me because I was unhappy. So please understand that I'm at a point in my life where I believe things happen for a reason, even if you can't see it in that moment. And yes, I've spent lots of times crying, <laughs> trying to figure, but basically taking it personally as well. So it's so hard not to take it personally. I've had times in my life where I have been laid off and I did take it very personally and I just wasn't, I didn't know then what I know now, which is a lot of times the universe is positioning you into, into a much better place. And, um, you know, actually sometimes you're even manifesting it yourself. So especially if you were already unhappy and you just had no clue where the layoff was coming from and it wasn't from an economic downturn, like some of the ways I've been laid off. So just understand that, you know, getting laid off can put you in a bad mood and it's okay to, you know, frolic in that bad mood, but try not to do it too long because you've got to get on the ball to applying for unemployment, applying for any other benefits that you can get. That way you can survive and be as stress-free as possible until you can get to the next amazing opportunity that is lying your way. Also understand there's a lot of things that can go wrong during the unemployment process. And that might actually make for another short video that I wanna put out. There's actually a lot of reasons and things I've actually experienced that has completely delayed the unemployment process. So I'll have to say that for another video. So here's the first thing we're gonna talk about, and it's gonna be the dead obvious one. You need to create a savings account, okay? Dave Ramsey didn't tell you to save six months worth of savings for no reason. The majority of even what Dave Ramsey teaches is six months worth of savings is enough to get you by six months worth of living. And in this case, <laughs> there could be another pandemic in the future where you're waiting longer. You know, a lot of people didn't even get paid out from the pandemic. They, unfortunately, there were errors that were happening for them. 
it's just inevitable when you have so many people going through the same process that there's going to be mistakes or that suddenly the state and the, or the federal government is going to have to come in and change even the process of what's going on and you need to be able to survive. Now, um, I wouldn't go as far as to say six months. I mean, if we're trying to say like, well, for those of y'all that are employed and you have an opportunity right now to start preparing for God forbid, I hope you don't have to go through this, but let's just say you st there's still layoffs that happened into 2023. It is inevitable, okay? It is inevitable um, to still get laid off in 2023. I don't think the recession's going away. I think a lot of it is long-term stuff still from the pandemic and it's just gonna keep trickling downward spiral. Create emergency savings. I would say at the least one to two months, at least have one month's worth of savings, okay? I would say more like two. The reason why I say at least have one to two months worth of savings of living expenses or God, okay, at the least your rent, okay? Is because sometimes when you're, like I said, I could make a whole nother video about all the ways or all the things that can go wrong during the unemployment process. At least have one month's worth of full living expenses to at least get your rent paid just because you could be waiting. State resources, local resources. It is almost four months later and I am still waiting on SNAP benefits, y'all. I have a dependent, so, and I've gotten it before during the pandemic. So I know I'm supposed to get it unless they change some rules, but I had to reapply for it because even though I've called and they have my application and they said, okay, we're gonna expedite your application, I have yet to see anything on my login account that tells me that I have, you know, usually a letter that's been granted, that you get a certain amount of SNAP food benefits each month. So I would create an emergency savings and you know, let's just say you get a severance. Well, now you have a little bit of an emergency savings to even start a side hustle, which, you know, we're going to talk about later. So the second thing you need to do to prepare before you get laid off or fired is know your state and local public assistant resources. Let's go over a few things. If you're in Texas right now, I've been, I'm born and raised in Texas. I've been living in Austin for 20 years. I'm in the Capitol. I've been laid off five times. I know I know this process. Hands down for Texas, it's it's going to be called different things in different states. But we've got Medicaid, we've got Medicare. Um, I've also been approved for the Texas Women's Health Program, which at least for women takes care of anything involved in your reproduction or your reproductive organs, okay? I have gotten on birth control, I have gotten off birth control, meaning I've, I've had the implant taken out on the Texas Women's Health Program. I've had my pap smear, I've had all those things. It is covered by the Texas Women's Health Program, which is technically paid for through Medicaid, but it's just for that one thing. Also, there's SNAP food benefits, which AKA, um, some people will call it food stamps. Now, SNAP food benefits can be a little different than actual food stamps. For example, with SNAP food benefits, sometimes you can actually spend your money on more than just actual food. Like it might allow you to spend on, you know, ibuprofen or children's Benadryl, you know, versus food stamps is literally just food, okay? So just know your state and local resources. There should be a website for all of this that explains it all. You can even get on YouTube and start typing in your state, and then put in food stamps or Medicare, Medicaid, or women's health program. Also, there's a local food bank. Every major city has a local food bank. God forbid if you are just so broke, okay? As far as I know, a long time ago, I don't know if it's ever changed, but you can go to, as far as I know, again, you should be able to go down to the local food bank, wait in line, get free food. Usually it's perishable items, bread, milk or bread, canned items, um, dry goods with nobody asking you like what your income is or, you know, how much you're making from unemployment. The local food bank is there to help everybody. And, you know, yes, you're going to see some homeless people there, but I'm like, I'm just saying y'all before you just go, you've got a bunch of mouths to feed. 
I would hands down go to local food bank. My mom even does it. She's like, why not? It's free food. And it's it's not expired, y'all. This is donated food. You know how many times you've seen at the grocery store, like, give canned goods for Thanksgiving, family and, you know, families in need for Thanksgiving. They won't take expired items. There's a liability behind that. So they shouldn't at least. Um, yeah, it's, it's local food bank is typically a nonprofit organization. But I'm pretty sure, you know, all those nonprofit orgs that they're doing to help other people, it's all it's all still regulated by the state in some form or fashion um, just to keep themselves in check. There's also uh, in Texas, there's TANF, which stands for Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. Now, TANF can help you with anything. It is literally giving you a temporary amount of money. Sometimes it could just be a one-time payment for a month. It could be, hey, we're gonna give you, you know, 500 bucks a month for three months. Now, TANF is something that, you know, they're gonna wanna know your situation, every nook and cranny. I, uh, working at an apartment complex once, I actually had a married couple. They were married, one person had lost their job, the other one didn't have enough. And they both actually had to apply for TANF, tell them the situation and they got help with their rent. So, and in the event that you are currently getting help with your rent, always, 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 always tell the property manager, the management company, tell a manager, an actual assistant manager or the property manager, don't just tell the leasing agent people, tell them, put it in writing, let them know that you are working on getting resources. Because a lot of times, if you tell them you're waiting on public assistance, sometimes they may actually not count your rent late. So, um, and then of course, since the pandemic, a lot of states have implemented mortgage and rental assistant programs, okay? Again, the quicker you tell people, hey, I don't think I can pay my rent, or I've only got this amount and I've applied for assistance, a lot of times they will wait, okay? They won't charge you, they'll override a late fee, they will do what they can to help you out as well, provided that you are getting the help. Okay, number three, okay, get educated. And I definitely do not mean going back to college. I do not condone spending money to uh, going back to school to get into debt to get an education. In fact, and again, this is gonna be another video, but I owe $51,000 for a degree that I never got to finish. Yeah. I'll tell you all about that in another video. But I, you know, now that I have a child, I'm in my 40s, I don't want to go back to school to get a degree. I would rather learn a skill, which I have been learning lots of skills over the past few years, other skills that aren't directly related to mortgage. I've been in real estate for 17 years. So that is my career. I am now trying to do other things. And I've learned so much amazing stuff through YouTube for free. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't had to pay anybody. I just I just do what I need to do to watch videos and see what, you know, what different people are saying, get different ideas and stuff like that. And then I just, you know, I go in and I just, I apply what I've learned and I try my best to do it all for free before I feel like I have to call somebody or pay somebody. Yeah, a lot of ways you can get educated. Read a book. <laughs> Sometimes just even reading a, de a personal development book can give you a different mindset to accomplishing whatever it is that you're trying to look for, get skilled on. But you can also read a nonfiction book that's actually going to teach you how to, you know, become a better salesman or how to, um, you know, how to create a landing page. A lot of this stuff can also be done on video. Again, YouTube is out there. There's also skills in Udemy, not sponsored. I'm just saying those are the ones I know off the top of my head where you can pay 10 or 20 bucks a month and you have access to so many free classes, like unlimited amount of classes to learn a skill. Uh, Google actually has a free Google certification course. Literally just Google, free Google certification course. They might have a few by now and that's a good entry level thing to get if you're gonna go into tech and they do it all online. I started it once, but I didn't finish it because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to apply for a tech job. I just wanted to know 
all the tech stuff and algorithm stuff and and that's part of what this course teaches you but it it's just a nice little introductory and if anything you apply for an entry-level job and you're like yep i took the i took the google certification course because you get a certificate so um again i've mentioned already watch youtube videos to learn something new uh udemy and skillshare you can also do things like go get licensed for something okay i uh even though it's expired i have my license as a real estate agent Texas real estate agent. So I let it expire. All I got to do is retake the test and I'm licensed again, but I've already gone through real estate school and I've let my license go three to uh, three times now. So all I had to do was go retake the test. And, um, it's only because recently I, I get I, 2019 was the last time I was a licensed agent and I, you know, then the pandemic happened go figure. So I didn't maintain my continuing education every year, probably because I was in a state of depression with the entire world. And I just didn't think of it. So it ended up expiring. And I'm actually thinking about doing that next month. That way, when the market picks back up, I can already have taken my test and passed it. And if I need more time, then I'm just going to do that. So you can get licensed. I uh, also still have to pass my mortgage exam, which is the NMLS, the National Mortgage Licensing Service. Again, I've taken the courses. I've taken the test twice. These tests are hard, y'all. They're, they're done by the same company that does your SATs. And I was not good <laughs> at SATs. I was cheerleader, drill team, senior spirit club. I was more like a C student with the amazing outgoing personality. I was not so much an academic. I'm much, I was much more of a social person. You know, go become a mortgage loan originator or go pass your test so you have that other opportunity. Also, I've been a certified nurse aide. When I was a pre-nursing student, I went and spent, I think, two full-time weekends at the community college, paid a few hundred dollars, knocked out, you know, basically the whole certification, uh, did my clinicals on a Sunday. You do it with you do it with everybody. It's a fast track, and that way, at least when I got a job, when I got a part time job, when I was a full time student as a certified nurse aide, just watching elderly people in their home. For the most part, I hung out with them, chit chatted, but they loved first of all knowing that like I was on my way to becoming a nurse. So they their client was was much more likely to enjoy or want to hire me because they still pick the certified nurse aide that's going to be with their loved one all day. But I also in return got to spend a lot of time studying. Okay. I didn't just sit on the couch watching TV with them all day. I was at the table. I was studying, but they were in my sight. And at least I got paid more per hour than someone who was not certified. So you know, there's also plebotomy, like you can get a uh, certified, like I think you can certified person to just draw blood. Like there's all these little certifications you can get. There's also certifications in the tech industry. You know, we've got General Assembly here in Austin, Texas for the tech world. And yes, it is expensive and some of them are fast track schools. But if there's a way for you to find some cheaper, quick certification course, you can either pay for that out of your savings or... If you're on unemployment, you actually possibly can have the state pay for that certification course. If it's going to lead you to a job to get off of unemployment, unemployment actually, and mo again, most states probably have this, but they're always going to offer Pell Grant for you to go back to college. If you really feel like you want to go back to college or you want to finish college, do it. But I would not go into debt just to... Like just because there's a recession and whatnot doesn't mean you should go back to school and that, you know, that's your only choice is to go back to college and take out more loans. I don't advise that you do that, okay? But somehow get educated, learn something new. You're on unemployment. You've got plenty of time. <laughs> um, okay, so number four, start a side hustle. This one's my favorite. When I lost my job twice in 2020, that was it for me. I was like, la the, the fire, proverbial fire got lit under my butt. I'm a single mom. I'm still a single mom. You know, I've got a mouth to feed. I've got, you know, a one bedroom apartment still. And 
I have to look out for my future at this point. And even if I had a husband, like my husband could pass one day, you know, and I could suddenly be left a widow where I have to, you know, pay for everything myself. So even for those of you moms or even husbands that are, you know, living off a of one household income, in my opinion, if someone, if some rich guy ever came around and said, hey, you don't have to work, I'd be like, thank you. And then I'd be starting my business. <laughs> That's just how I am. Why? Because again, even if I'm married, something could happen to my husband. I could find out that he doesn't leave any money to me in my will when he passes, whatever it might be. And I need to know that I am still always working to support me and my child. Well, again, I wouldn't advise that you go into debt. And when I say start a side hustle, y'all, there's two types of side hustles. I want to talk about this more in depth in another video because some people are would say, go get a side hustle or go start a side hustle. And those are two totally different things. And I'll just briefly describe it. To go start a side hustle or go get a side hustle, which that would mean to go work for someone else, like Lyft, Uber, DoorDash, Favor, just to make a little extra money on the side. Okay, then there's start a side hustle. Okay, starting a side hustle, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. It could be unless you got the algorithm wave and something good just happened. So I started a side hustle in January, 2021. Within a week of opening up my Etsy shop, I had my first sale. When I started my second side hustle earlier in 2022 in uh, April, way before I lost my job, again, within a week and a half, I had my first sale. Now I'm not making a ton of money, but even just to know you could list one product for sale today and if it hits the algorithm right, you're gonna get somebody's attention and that attention is a sale. And then it just, it's just a downward spiral, or in this case, it's an upward spiral uh, after that. So, um, and you've gotta be ready to, to crank some stuff out. So, you know, I have three Etsy shops right now uh, that I have built up and I'm at a point right now where I'm kinda just letting I'm letting them all coast um, just because I'm, I'm now wanting to focus more on YouTube. But who knows, like in three months, suddenly I could hit the algorithm on one of them. And then like this one chick, she was like, I got 700 orders in one day. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that would be an amazing problem to have. So start a side hustle. This is the time to think about what do you want to do for you? Okay, what do you want to do for you? What is something you've always wanted to do? What are you passionate about selling? Because you're going to be selling, even if it means starting a YouTube channel and selling yourself. <laughs> Not selling your soul, but selling yourself. And if you're talking about just going to get a side hustle, if you are that broke and you want to start a side hustle, but you just need to get money, you need to find money. Again, this is a whole nother video. I've got lots of creative ways, some in which some of y'all young people would never know. I actually just found money um, a couple months ago by doing the, the, the search, which I will tell you about in another video because I, I have to physically show you on the internet. So you can find money, legal money that you're owed. You can also crowdfund. You can apply for business grants, which is free money given to you by the government or organizations. Um... And of course, if you had a savings account, you would have already been in a good position to start a little side hustle, even if it means taking a hundred bucks, okay? Um, you can start a product-based business, you can start a service-based business, or you can start a strictly digital business. So again, another video. I literally want to do the next video after this video on, you know, all about side hustles. Um, okay, so the fifth thing you need to do before you get laid off you need to know, God, you need to know, you can negotiate a severance package. Yes, you can. Guess what? I didn't know that until like a year ago. I saw a girl on a YouTube video who had gotten laid off and she was talking about how she was in the middle of negotiating her severance. And I was like, you can negotiate your severance? And again, I know it's going to sound stupid. I'm almost 45 and I didn't even know that. Now, I still made the mistake this time. 
and again, this is a little trick that some people might, some of your employers or your maybe future ex-employers might say, mine did the thing where they said, well, you've been here for two years, so we gave you an extra two weeks to equal a month. And I was like, oh, like, I was like, oh, okay. And I realized after that, I was like, shoot, I could have negotiated more. I could, I just could have, I could have tried. Because the thing is, they want to hurry up and cut, they want to hurry up and get your computer back. They want to cut their losses with the, with the employee. They don't want anything to linger. So when you negotiate, it's like the best position to have people in to negotiate. And also, by the way, most of your unemployment is actually paid it through from a fund in which that employer has put into every single month. So yeah, the quicker you can be and you want to be on your full-time income or close to your full-time income is much more money per month than what unemployment will give you. With unemployment, you only get about 40% of your actual pay, okay? You don't get a replacement. It's not even 50%. And for most of us, it's not anywhere close to what we are worth, okay? So this is why I say ain't no shame in using your state resources. If it's only temporary, I mean, for most of y'all watching this video, you're probably on unemployment. You're like, I want to get out of it. You've got too much time on your hands. You're going crazy. You feel like you've taken a shot to your confidence. And then worse is you feel like the longer you stay unemployed, it's going to be harder for you to get a job, okay? Which is somewhat true, but you want to ideally want to try to keep your mind right. And some of that is if you can negotiate more money in your severance package or a longer time frame of your severance package, try to do that. Okay, flat out, please, especially women were the worst people with negotiating. I'm in real estate and I still forgot when they threw the extra two weeks. It just, it kind of, it was, I feel like it was a little bit of a mental trick and I didn't, you know, it didn't make me think about, wait a minute, no, 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 I can, I can negotiate more. Okay, so know that you can negotiate a severance, even if they don't offer you a severance, literally email that HR person and say, I'd like to get the ball rolling with uh, negotiating a severance package, please. Okay, see what they're willing to offer you first and then go from there. Because I can tell you right now, I didn't even get my full month's pay of my severance. There's a certain way that they calculated my four weeks of severance and it definitely, it was at least like four or $500 less than what I was getting used to being paid every month. So be careful with these things. Know that you have a right. Everything is negotiable in life. It never hurts to ask. And the thing is, if they say no, well, then guess what? You're going to get your unemployment quicker. When you get your severance package, you're not going to get any unemployment until that severance package has run out. But again, at least you're getting full-time money or close to full-time money. You can pay your bills. You can feed yourself or your family. And then it, it still just keeps you from getting so stressed out so that you can put all that extra energy into looking for the next opportunity. Here's the bonus tip at the end, y'all. And some of y'all might leave me some comments down below. And again, this is, this is more like a fact. I will still tell you to do what's best for you and your family. If you feel like you can instantly get out there and make a lot more than unemployment, then go for it. Um, the bonus tip that I'm going to give you is do not take a job from a staffing or temp agency. These temp agencies are now usually called staffing companies and typically they are most of the time they are not direct hire. Okay. Now when you are a temp to hire, Okay, you are a temp. 50-50 chance they're not going to hire you permanently. Worse is to take one of these for six months. Go in, go five months into it thinking, man, I've got the job. I've got one more month. I'm doing great. And then before your six months that they would permanently hire you, they 
let you go, which they have a right to do if they're using a staffing company to find employees. What that ends up doing is now making the temp agency your most recent employer. So then what happens is they're going to say, we've got this job for you. We've got this job for you for a week here. We've got this job for two weeks here. It could be crappy jobs like a call center job. You could be like coming from a six figure income. And if they're giving you this crappy, crappy low wage work and you're turning it down, well, now you're risking losing your unemployment benefits. Okay. And then of course you've just gotten spit up and chewed out. I learned this lesson the hard way. Now I was not happy that that happened. I did lose out on unemployment and now I know I'll never do it again. That is why now I would much rather take the unemployment. I'd much rather, uh, much rather get approved for as much public assistance that I can start my side hustle, or if you had one already, now just focus on that full time while you're also looking for jobs, networking, tweaking, you know, tweaking your resume, sending them out, updating your LinkedIn, ZipRecruiter, Monster, and all those things. But also while you're relaxing in between, try to, you know, try to just keep a good head on your shoulder, try to stay stress-free, Try to get into a routine of working out. Maybe this is the time to also like declutter. I'm going through that right now. Declutter, maybe sell some things on eBay or Poshmark, some of your personal belongings. Um, And by the way, I'll talk about more in another video, but if you you need to sell personal belongings on eBay or Poshmark, uh, uh, that's actually not considered income. Check with your state. But I found out just through Google that um, when you are just selling your own personal belongings and it's not a reselling job, you can actually just keep your own money. That's just basically paying yourself back for what you've spent. So if you feel like, oh my gosh, I need some cash, start selling some stuff, make that money. Um, But the moment you go work for somebody, you now have part-time employment. So even if you thought, man, I'm gonna go side hustle and deliver some Domino's pizza, Well, whatever money you made that week, you're going to have to report that income. So hope all that helped. If you have any questions, please put them down below. It might make for a great video. I would love to do a couple more videos after this one just because, you know, I know there's people still getting laid off. I recently just saw a video that Walmart is actually going to be raising their prices finally. And and on top of that, closing some stores. And they've already just laid off like 8,000 people, maybe even more. Of course, Amazon just laid off 10,000 people. So nobody is prone to it, okay? There's people who, I mean, even some of the people I worked with had worked for my old company for five years and they got laid off. So there is no recipe for who gets laid off and who doesn't. Don't think just because uh, you're making six figures, you don't, you, you know, you're just free of risk. And everybody needs to understand there is a recession happening, okay? It is. And even if it's not, save your money. (laughs) There could be another pandemic in the future. And this time it could take way longer. Why? Because there was so much fraud after the pandemic. Now, when I applied for unemployment this time, I had to do the ID.me thing, which means I had to go to my computer, have my computer scan my face, I had to like wait for certain emails before I was gonna do the next thing and then I had to wait for approval. So I, that actually delayed, that was actually one of my delays in unemployment. Um, It delayed it by two weeks. So um, then I had another delay. But anyways, I'm gonna do a few more videos. Please stay tuned, please subscribe, like or share this video if you think it was helpful, especially if you can pass this on to someone else who's never been laid off and This is your way of giving them the support because maybe you've never been laid off or maybe you're just not familiar with things in their state. Um, And this is not going to be the first. A recession is inevitable. Anyways, thank you for watching.